Visit us at Eduvo. Thank you for calling Eduvo. Color plays an important role in web design, and with CSS, a color value can be described in several different ways. In this video, we'll learn how to define colors using keywords, hexadecimal values, and other methods. So let's get started. I've set up a basic HTML page containing a heading and a div element, and linked to it is a style sheet where I created some initial page styles just to get us started. We'll be adding our color values to the div element as a background color. First up, a color value can be one of the 16 basic predefined keywords that represent a common color, such as red, the color green, or blue. Now, those are just three of the 16 basic colors, but there is also a list of extended color keywords supported by the popular browsers. Some of the color names include a combination of words, such as light blue, even colors like tomato, and sandy brown. For a full list of the colors, take a look at the w3.org's color keyword names. Another way we can describe color is by using hexadecimal notation. A hexadecimal value is a combination of red, green, and blue color values. It is specified by hash sign immediately followed by six hexadecimal characters, represented by the numbers 0 through 9 and the letters A through F. They are written as three double-digit numbers. So, for example, if we define our color value as FF0033, FF is the red value, 00 is the green value, and 33 is the blue value. We'll refresh our browser and we'll see that the hex value is the color red. The value can be abbreviated if each of the red, green, and blue hex pairs are the same. So for our value, we can abbreviate each color channel using one character instead of two identical characters, like so. We'll refresh the page and notice how the color has not changed. The shorthand value still represents the same color. Next up, the RGB method uses functional notation to specify colors in terms of a mixture between red, green, and blue values. The first value is red, the second is green, and the third value is blue. For these values, 255 is the maximum value we can use, and 0 is the minimum. When we refresh the browser, we'll see that the value we use describes a shade of the color blue. We can also extend the RGB model to allow alpha for setting the opacity of an element with the alpha channel. To do this, we'll add a fourth value of A for alpha, then inside the parentheses, we'll go ahead and add the alpha value. The A controls the opacity. Zero would give us full transparency, and a value of one would be completely opaque. So here we chose 0.9. And in the browser, I've generated some text and positioned it behind our div. So when we refresh, we'll see how the alpha channel affects our page. So notice how the div is now semi-transparent and the text is starting to show through. And if we change our value from 0.9 to 0.4, there we see the difference in transparency and how the text is now clearly visible. Finally, the HSL method is similar to RGB in that we declare three values to determine color. HSL stands for hue, saturation, lightness. The first number is the hue value. The second is the saturation. And the third value is the lightness. When we refresh the page, notice how this also gives a variation of the color blue. 
Now let's go over what these values actually do. The hue value is represented as an angle in the color wheel, measured in degrees from 0 to 360. The six major colors are red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta. They're spaced out by angles of 60 degrees, as you can see in this color wheel example. In the saturation value, zero is completely desaturated, or grayscale, and 100% is fully saturated, or full color. The lightness value is also represented as percentages. 0% lightness is black, 100% lightness is white, and 50% lightness is normal. So let's go ahead and create a new color now that we know what these values mean. We'll go ahead and use a hue of green, which begins at 120. So let's use 130 for our hue value. And we'll make the saturation 50%. And we'll change the lightness value to 35%. We'll refresh the browser and there we see our new color value of green. Like RGBA, we can also use HSLA to extend the HSL color model to include alpha and allow us to specify the opacity of a color. So for our alpha value, let's go ahead and add a value of 0.7. When we refresh the page, notice how the alpha value works just like it did when we used RGBA. The div element is semi-transparent and the text behind it is beginning to show through. RGBA and HSLA are widely supported in the major browsers, and there are some advantages to using the HSLA color model over RGBA. HSLA is far more intuitive because you can adjust colors on the fly, knowing how each value you change will affect the color, so it's easier to create color variations quickly.